heart failure. Hi. Welcome to the comic book show. I'm Keith Colvin, and I'm glad you decided to join us today. The comic book show is kind of self-explanatory. What we're going to be doing is talking about comic books. More importantly, we're going to be talking about the fans of comic books, you. We're going to be talking about, uh, and with, some of the professionals in comics, lots of the fans, how do comics affect you, and we're going to get right to the meaty issues. We're going to cover everything from Superman to Batman to the X-Men, and hopefully we'll get to every single one of you's specific interest. Our first show, we're going to kick off with an interview with Larry Langford. He's the owner and um, organizer of Bulldog Productions. We're also going to have current uh, movie news with Jackie Sprang. Now, what I'm working on now is, is what's going to happen in this show. Let's see, uh, maybe we could do uh, a hero history of some obscure superhero like Metamorpho. Maybe we could do uh, some fun things. Most importantly, what I want to get across to you is that I need your help to put this show together. I'm going to be giving you some addresses and some phone numbers later on to get in touch with us. Let us know what's going on with the fandom out here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and get back with us so that maybe soon you can be on the comic book show. The Comic Book Alphabet presents The Letter X. X-Men. X-Mutants. X-Factor. Excalibur. Exterminators. Exhausted. Beep, 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 beep. It's the bat phone. Yes, Commissioner. Well, uh, Robin and I were going to just get some cash out of this ATM machine, but uh, yeah, I guess we could go over there afterwards. Uh, the Joker? Okay, sure. Okay, we'll be right there. Bye. Okay, man, we gotta we gotta step on it. The comic book show is thrilled to have an in-studio guest today, one Larry Langford, owner and organizer of Bulldog Productions. Start with me, Larry, with uh, your involvement in comics. Where did it start? Well, um, starting when I was four years old, and I learned to read from uh, my very first Marvel comic. It excited me so much that I. I uh, got my parents to help me learn how to read before I actually went to school. So it's been pretty much a lifelong uh, enthusiasm of mine. And uh, I cut my teeth on the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and uh, all those great comics in the 60s. And uh, in the 70s, started going to conventions and collecting comics. And I uh, started dealing comics part-time. Put on a few conventions part-time on my own. Uh, managed to lose a lot of money that way until I figured out what I was doing. And then uh, in the 80s, I founded the company Bulldog Productions, which uh, the primary function is to put on comic book conventions uh, in Dallas primarily, but also all around the state of Texas. So you're saying you still, you still have a collection? You're still an active collector then? Yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. Super. That's part of the fun. <laughs> now, let's go back to the, the Bulldog Productions. Describe the organization that is Bulldog Productions. Well, Bulldog Productions is uh, primarily me, which is the only full-time employee. And uh, I'm pretty much the organizer of the shows. I pick out the dates, get the hotels, uh, contact the comic book artists that I think would make good speakers, uh, publicize the event, let all the fans know about it. And then we have one person in the office that works uh, part-time, Kelly, who answers all the mail, maintains the mailing list and stuff like that. Uh, on top of that, once the, the conventions roll around, we've built up kind of a crew of volunteer workers that we have div uh, divided up into uh, about a dozen different departments. And most of these are fans who uh, attended the conventions. They enjoyed it, so they wanted to get to work. Uh, we have uh, one lady that heads up our security for watching badges at the door. Another crew does the registration desk. Another crew picks up all the guests at the airport. And each of these people work pretty much autonomously within themselves, put together their own staff that uh, they're only real reward for this is getting to work at the convention or getting in free, getting to meet the guests and things like that. So uh, most of these people have worked together for the last three or four years at all the conventions, so it's pretty much a, a family kind of atmosphere really that we have for the staff. 
So we're saying this is, sounds like a pretty large organization you can put together here. Let's, let's go back to the last fantasy fair. How many people attended the last fantasy fair that you produced? We had almost 4,000 people. And uh, that's predominantly people from Dallas, but also from all around uh, the, the state and the country. Uh, Dallas, the Dallas Fantasy Fair is the biggest show we do. We do three of those a year, one Thanksgiving weekend, one in April, and then one in July each year, which is always our biggest show and has the most national appeal. And uh, we tried to big, build that into the one show of the year that uh, we bring in people from out of state, that uh, people live in Oklahoma or Louisiana or in the neighboring states, they don't have to go all the way to San Diego or New York to get a really big convention. That They can always count on the Summer Fantasy Fair to have all the, uh, the biggest comic artists and writers, all the publishers will be represented, and uh, all the things you'd expect out of a major comics and science fiction show. Now, you, you just said that the, the comic writers and, and producers are there. What else happens at, at a Bulldog production convention? Well, the first thing people see when they walk in is the huge dealer's room, which is uh, comics uh, being bought, sold, and, and, and traded like a big exhibit hall. And uh, if you collect comics, chances are you can find just about anything you might want not necessarily at prices you'd want to pay, but you'll most likely be able to find it in the room. And then we also um, give people a schedule of events, which tells them what goes on. We have uh, the artists and writers talking about their work. We have a masquerade contest. We have dances, um, just all sorts of different things, a full schedule. They got a video room? Up. Yeah, a video room. We show uh, Japanese animation 24 hours a day. We have gaming competitions and stuff like that. So there's a little bit for everyone there. Yes. Now then, we've talked about the convention. Walk me through exactly what does Larry Langford do during the Fantasy Fair, for example. Well, I try to hide as often as I can because people <laughs> are always running up with uh, problems or things that they think are problems that need to be solved right then. Uh, my hardest work really is the, the weeks before the show, getting everything straight with the hotel, making sure that they've got the room set right, making sure that the guests have all of their um, airline tickets, uh, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a pretty big undertaking for, to give us uh, an example. Where was the last Fantasy Fair held? It's at the Sheraton Park Central. And it's a pretty big is, place. Yeah, real big place. Barrooms, 13,000 square feet. Is, is there, you say you have a lot of guests and uh, famous writers, artists, production people. Is there anyone that you got a particular thrill out of meeting? Oh, yeah. I met both uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. They've been guests at the Fantasy Fairs. And uh, most comics fans, we know those are the people that the two men that pretty much created all the Marvel comics in the 1960s. Uh, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, all those kind of characters. Big guys. Yeah, big guys. Well, is there uh, anyone, for example, that you haven't been able to get down to the fantasy? Well, for years we've been trying to get um, Bob Kane that uh, created Batman, which of course it's going to be real tough to get him now that Batman's sure. so popular. Sure. And we've also sent uh, repeated invitations to uh, uh, Joe Siegel and Jerry Schuster, who are the creators of Superman, but their health and their age really presents them, prevents them from traveling to to very many places. They don't make many conventions anymore. Okay. 